this is gonna go in her coffee. Oh, that's awesome. That actually looks like us. Wow. The Hello Kitty is branded into the bun. Now we're just walking around Libertad, which is the Asian area of Sao Paulo. Paulo, Brazil. This is our second day here, so we slept in really late because we're still dealing with the time difference. So we are about four hours ahead of Minnesota time, so we're still adjusting. We're very hungry, so we're gonna roam the streets and find something good to eat. coming up on an Asian neighborhood and community. Uh, you can tell from these lampposts here. Looks like a Japanese town or something like that. And we actually read that Brazil has the largest population of Japanese outside of Japan. That's so. crazy. So interesting. So we came across a Hello Kitty restaurant as we were walking and we're gonna go check it out because it looks pretty cool. <laughs> But first, before we go to Hello Kitty Cafe, we are going to go to Coffee Selfie and see what this is all about. Is that where you take back. your selfie? <laughs> go sit! <laughs> So this is going to go in her coffee. Does that work? Okay, we're sending them these two pictures. Let's see how they turn out. Coffee selfie is where it's at. I'm eating my face. So we ordered this kind of for the experience, not knowing if the coffee would actually be good because it was only $2, but this is actually one of the better coffees I've ever had. Plus you get your selfie in it. Kitty Let's go. Look at everything is Hello Kitty. Mmm. 
Oh yeah. Not only looks good, but tastes good. That is really good. The bun is almost like a like a croissant, like a really soft croissant. And the burger's just falling apart. Okay, sadly I'm about to eat this cute little Hello Kitty. So it's a macaroon and it has a strawberry filling in it. It's all right. I think it's better looking than how it actually tastes. It tastes kind of artificial. One of the staff members here just gave us this letter and it basically is saying that the next floor is open where they keep the cakes and cupcakes. He wrote it in English for us. How cute is that? Now we're just walking around Libertad, which is the Asian area of Sao Paulo. So kind of like the Japan town. You can even get massages on the street. <laughs> coconut water, sugar cane, juice. Ginger. So the Japanese people have been here in Brazil for a long time, since the end of the 19th century. And that's because coffee was the biggest export in Brazil and they used slaves for a while to help with the workload. But when slavery was abolished in 1850, I believe, they had to find out a new way to get workers to Brazil to work on the coffee plantations. So they started trying to get Europeans here and all of that. And eventually they made a deal with the Japanese so Japanese people could come here and work. And so it just exploded from there. And that's why there are a ton of Japanese people and a big Japanese, basically Japan town here. <laughs> a whole district dedicated to the Japanese culture. And it's not just Japanese. It's Chinese, it's a lot of different Asian cultures have come here and they've kind of uh, taken over this little area of Sao Paulo. So this over here, this is the Oriental Garden. That's one of the main things to see when you come to uh, the Japan town area. But I think it's closed because of COVID. Yeah, sadly it's closed. But if you come here not during COVID, you can check that out. So even though that was closed, we have noticed that mostly all of Sao Paulo is open. Everyone's wearing masks, but all the stores seem open. A lot of the sites seem open. <laughs> okay, so we just came across this store with all these coconuts hanging here. And we thought we would check it out, maybe get something. Kiwi and coconut water, 11. So that's like $2, so pretty cheap. And then we have all the snack foods from the streets. Okay, we got a kiwi and coconut water. Let's give this a try. Oh, that's good. It mainly just tastes like a kiwi juice, but wow. I'd say one of my favorite parts of Brazil so far is oh. the cheap fruit drinks. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. Kiwi is very expensive in the U.S. So you can't really get a juice like this unless it's extremely expensive. You get kind of the bitterness, a little bit of sweetness from the kiwi. And it's oh. ice cold. Also, we found out while talking to a local that it is not yet summertime in Brazil. It is spring. So I was thinking, it's not as hot as I thought it would be, but that's because it's spring. So it's only going to get hotter from here on out. The weather has been really good. It's a little bit hot, but, but we like it. But once it gets a little hotter than this in a month, mm -hmm. it might be too much. But at least that way we can kind of adapt we'll over be to time. We'll the beaches by then. Yeah, we just went from snow two days ago in Minnesota to this, so mm -hmm. it's good.
So guys, we are doing a ton today. So this is gonna be the end of the video for the day. Uh, it's about four o'clock. We have a few more things to show you, but so that's gonna be in the next video. So if you wanna see what we're up to with the rest of our day, check out the next video. If you wanna follow us on our journey traveling the world, click that subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit the like button. It helps us out a lot. Leave a comment below. We love to hear from you guys. to Q&A. First question comes from Mark Keller. Is there any chance you could put together a video of highlights of your time in Peru? So we haven't done that yet, but in a way we kind of did. So we have some best foods of Peru, best things to do, unique experiences, and travel tips. Yeah, so it won't be exactly just a highlight reel, but Throughout a few videos, we'll be using it for informational kind of stuff and just showing you guys some of the best things we did and saw and uh, things that'll help other travelers when they go there. How to travel Peru and you know the best foods that we tried. That kind so of stuff. in a way, some highlights. So. so if you watch all of those, you'll get the highlights mm -hmm. <laughs> through those. So yeah, keep your eyes out for those videos. We will be posting them soon and we hope you guys really like them. We had a fun time compiling all of our favorite things and tips into those videos. Next question comes from Sue from Toronto on. Is it just me or do you guys have more commercials? How is it determined how many commercials there will be per video and is it mandatory to have them? Does it pay you to have commercials? Just curious. I'll let Alex speak to this. He knows exactly how it works. So yeah, YouTube puts the commercials on there. It isn't mandatory, we can have no commercials, but that's how we make money to travel. So the commercials help out. So as far as how many there are, YouTube made some kind of update this year, it seems. Uh, as I was doing this, uh, my other YouTube channel the last couple years, they would put maybe one commercial before the video and one during if it was over 10 minutes. But now it seems like no matter what, they have one every couple minutes or something. That's something that I can go in and change, but it takes some time and I don't usually think about it, but I can go in and manually take out some of the ads. Uh, I don't know why YouTube <laughs> does that, but I'll look into it and see if maybe they can do just a couple instead of like 10 ads. <laughs> also, we know the ads are kind of annoying, but they do help us out. You can skip yeah. the ad, so after a few seconds, you can feel free to just press skip the ad. But if you watch the whole thing, I think we get like maybe a cent per ad that's watched. <laughs> maybe it's less than that. Yeah, but... so it all adds up. Pun wasn't intended. <laughs> it adds up. So if we take out half of the ads or all the ads, then the money's going to go down a lot. And already it's not a ton of money that you get from YouTube unless you have a million subscribers. So if you want to subscribe and help us out, maybe we can take out more ads. <laughs> uh, but we'll have to make back that money somehow because it's not a ton, but it's just enough to get us to keep going. Just think of it like a TV show, you know? There's always the commercials, but at least YouTube, you can skip them, so. Yeah, so thank you for watching the yeah. ads, or try, try not to get too frustrated Sorry, with them if annoying, possible. We don't know what else to do. Necessary <laughs> evil. Yeah. Next one comes from Persistente1. Have you ever got sick eating street food? Uh, I'm sure we have. Maybe we didn't know it was the direct cause. I have, but okay. but I've eaten street food all over the world, and most of the time I did not get sick. So I'm not a I'm not afraid of street food, and I don't think you should be either. <laughs> street food is one of the best things that you have to do while you travel to yeah. countries that have a street food culture. Um, I believe I did one time. And that was in India, where foreigners seem to get sick whenever they go to India. It just happens. And whether I had street food or just food in restaurants, I think I would have been sick either way. Uh, but there are certain things you want to learn if you go to somewhere like India about what you should and shouldn't have because some are a little more uh, or a little less hygienic than others. And I was just eating everything. <laughs> so 
The thing is, you could get sick even just eating in a restaurant because really you don't know what goes on behind the scenes in a restaurant, how sanitary things are. So either way, you're kind of taking a risk and the street food is so good and part of the culture. So you don't want to miss street food. All right. That's the end of our Q&A. Please leave your questions for the next Q&A below. Make sure you write Q and A on there and we will try to get to them and add them to the Q&A for the next video. Please like this video, it always helps us out, down below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.